Your Hello? Oh. Your Excellency Dr. Lazarus Chakwera, President of the Republic of Malawi. Your Excellency Madam Monica Chakwera, First Lady of the Republic of Malawi, distinguished guests, all protocols observed. Right Honorable Dr. Salos Klaus Chilima, the Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, or as I knew him, Dad. My dad was a great role model, a great leader, and a great family man. The time spent with him was very rewarding because you could always learn something. This week, I have heard many stories about people's experiences with my dad, and every single one of them has shared a story about something they took from him either just by watching what he did or whether it was something he told them that changed the way they lived their life, he definitely touched a lot of people's hearts. All these things that he has done for other people, I never really knew because his charitable works were always silent. Since my childhood, my dad has been someone I admired, not because of all the achievements throughout his life, but because of the amount of work he would put in behind the scenes. My dad had a daily routine, which in my eyes uh, was very difficult to maintain. Every morning, he was up at 4 a.m. where he would go pray at his personal altar in the house where the candles would never stop burning. After prayers, he would go and open all curtains, doors, and windows before proceeding to church for the 6 a.m. Mass, which he never missed. When he got back from church, he would go to the gym and run on the treadmill for about an hour before heading to the office where he would start his day of work. As a child, I didn't realize that my dad had such a high work ethic. But as I got older, I began to understand that his work ethic was one I had never seen before, nor will I ever see anybody match again. He was so passionate about making the things he believed in become reality, and he made sure that by whatever means necessary, he would get the results that he desired. Whether that meant having sleepless nights or making countless sacrificing sacrifices like fasting for days on end, he made sure he got the job done and done correctly. The person I am today is because of the team that my parents were. They taught me to have good morals, to always be kind, to never be violent, to take care of others, and to be humble. But they also taught me the fun side of life. My dad is the reason I started supporting Manchester United. And even when he stopped supporting them and called them a useless team, I thank him for introducing me to them because they have brought me joy in recent times. Most of the sports that I play are because of all the awards that he had in the house. Football awards, basketball awards, golf awards. Dad was a versatile person in everything that he did. And naturally, my sister and I followed in his footsteps and started playing these sports as well. I became one of the starting players for Kamuzu Academy's senior basketball team. And then when I left KA, I joined a local team in Lilongwe before I went to university. My sister here has also been nominated for a basketball award at her secondary school. So dad, your influence on us was great then 
and will continue to guide us in our lives from here on out. For me personally, music is one of my biggest passions in life and it's something I took very seriously while I was at KA. When the Kamuzu Academy Orchestra was heading out for our first concert at Capitol Hotel with the Malawi Defense Force Brass Band, I was chosen as one of the MCs. I was very nervous as it was going to be my first ever public speaking event and I did not know what I was doing. However, the first face I saw which calmed me down and gave me confidence that evening was my dad's. He watched as I hosted the concert and played two different instruments that night. And on that same night, I saw a side of him that I had never known before. About halfway through the program, he got up in front of everyone after my co-host announced he was going to do something. He walked to the front to the stage, picked up the baton, and led the MDF brass band to play a song which led me both impressed and surprised. I did not know he had a musical side to him as well. I mean, we know my mom is quite the lyricist when it comes to music, so I was happy to see that it was something that runs in the family. But many of us here saw my dad as a serious, determined, and inspiring person. But like many of us here, he also had a fun side. Dad was funny. At family dinners, he would crack jokes all the time and initiate banter between the four of us. He would make funny faces and funny noises at random points in our conversations. And he was very competitive whenever we played board games, especially Monopoly and Scrabble. Beating him was never easy, but when it did happen, he always wanted a rematch because he could never go on a loss. Now, if there's one thing that I could say defined my dad, it would be his faith and devotion to God. He always wore a rosary, whether that was around his neck or on his wrist. Always had his three books with him, first being the Pieta, a small prayer book he used every day along with two hymn books, which he didn't really need because he knew all the songs off by heart anyway. But I guess they were special to him, so he kept them with him. He would always go to the longest available mass, which was 9 a.m. on Sundays at St. Patrick's Parish because he loved prayer more than anyone I knew. And he would help out as often as possible in the church, whether that would be during the mass when he was a member of Dongosoro, or overseeing the renovation of St. Patrick's Parish. He was always involved in the church in some way. This week, I found out that wherever he traveled, whether to different cities in Malawi or to different countries, one of the first things he would do is look for a church so he could go and pray the following morning. He loved the church so much and he would always be the loudest person when saying prayers. He would be the loudest when singing hymns and giving praise. He never hesitated to dance when his favorite uh, hymns were being sung. And that's something that I started doing just because I watched him every Sunday. Every year, he would organize mass on the 29th of December at Nsipe to pray for his late parents and other late relatives. He continued to pray for them every day and made sure that we as a family had a dedicated day to pray for them and remember them. I'm not sure about everyone here, but I think that's pretty amazing. Now, Dad, Mom can't speak right now, but she asked me to tell you that she is grateful for the gift of you. You have loved each other from an early age and your love was unshakable. For the past 20 years, you have taken care of her as she struggled with her painful arthritis, praying for her constantly, sending her to the best hospitals across the world, and your unwavering support of all that she did and your complete acceptance of who she is, flaws and all, is truly appreciated. 
you will forever be her love and she will forever be your dearest. Now, before I close, I'm a big fan of fiction and there is one quote from a show that I like called One Piece. And the quote states, when does a man die? When he is hit by a bullet? No. When he suffers a disease? No. When he eats a soup made out of a poisonous mushroom? No. A man dies when he's forgotten. End quote. Now this quote, now this quote came into my mind when I was thinking about what to say here today. And I thought it was odd, but after going through the week and understanding what people said about my dad, it makes perfect sense for two reasons. The first is that even though my dad is physically not here anymore, his legacy will live on in the hearts of the people he touched. Anybody that has good memories of my dad will ensure that his legacy lives on for generations to come. And even if only we, as a family, continue to remember him, he will live on forever. Now the second, and I believe more important reason, is that he is now in a place where he can be happy and look down on us knowing he did a good job. I have no doubt in my heart that he's in heaven watching over all of us gathered here today. No doubt that some of the things I said here today came from him as well. No doubt that he is in heaven with his beloved mother and father who have patiently waited to meet him again. So instead of looking at my dad's passing as a sad event, even though I feel pain, I will celebrate the life that he led. I'll continue to take him as an example in day-to-day -day life and in my Christian life, continue to speak with him and ask him for guidance, continue to be a good son to mom, continue to be a good big brother to my sister, continue to be a friend to all the people who consider me one, and finally, continue to believe that when the time comes, we will all be reunited again with you in God's kingdom. I love you, Dad, and I'll see you later. Thank you.